Hello, this video is about precision and accuracy, as well as significant figures and dimensional analysis. So starting with precision and accuracy. Precision is how closely individual measurements agree with one another, or are you getting the same thing every time, or about the same thing every time. Accuracy is how closely individual measurements agree with the correct value, so are you getting what you should be getting. Um, so if we just use a target to model this, um, check, which is like high um, precision, high accuracy, or uh, cross, which is like low accuracy, low precision. If it was, if we had values that said high accuracy and high precision, this would mean that like all of these values would be very close to the bullseye or the target because all of them are close to one another. So high precision and accuracy, um, they're all close to the correct value or like the bullseye. Think of this like a target. Um, if we had an example or a measurements, uh, uh, measurements that had low accuracy but high precision, um, this would mean that um, the measurements aren't really with the correct value, but the high, there's high precision. They're um, closely to each other. So this would maybe be not near the center, but they would all be um, clustered together. Um, so try an example with ac low accuracy and low precision. Okay, so this one would mean that values are not close to each other and they are not even close to the correct value. So this would just be totally random um, with no really pattern. Um, if we had um, high accuracy, low precision, what do you think that would look like? Yeah, so if it was high accuracy, that means the individual uh, measurements agree with the correct value, but they're not necessarily all close together. So on average, they would be around the center, around the correct value, but they're not necessarily super close to each other, like um, these ones with high precision. Okay, moving on to measurement uncertainty. So let's just say that we have a scale that measures out to three decimal places or the thousandths place. So... Um, it's 0.001 gram, um, and we measure something, and the scale tells us that we get got 2.454 grams. But this is actually not the precise value. This isn't really how much the the mass of whatever we're measuring. Um, the it, the scale could be off by plus or minus um, 0.001 gram because we don't know if this is 2.4541 gram or 2.4542 grams. Um, so we need this extra, um, this plus or minus 0.001 to be sure that our um, measurement is actually what it is supposed to be. Um, however, it's really hard to just write every value like this. So instead, it's just implied that like with any measurement, it's going to be uncertain. Like 2.454 isn't actually the exact mass of whatever you're measuring. It's actually plus or minus 0.001 gram. Okay, so segueing into significant figures. So significant figures or sig figs are all digits of a quantity plus one uncertain one. So this is um, kind of explaining that every measurement is um, uncertain. So it's just implied that you don't write the plus or minus 0.001. So in this one, um, it's plus one uncertain one. And we know that we're not totally sure about this four. So it's the last one. Um, one main rule for significant figures are all non-zero digits are significant. Um, additionally, zeros between non-zeros are always significant. So if we look at the number 303, these are both non-zeros, these are both significant, and the um, zeros are between the non-zeros. So this means one, two, three, three sig figs. So try this for 4,051. So there are four fig sig figs, because we know that all digits that are um, non-zeros are significant. Um, so one, two, three, four, and the zeros between those, so four. Um, another rule is zeros at the beginning are never significant. Um, this is mainly for decimals. So for example, for this one, these zeros are at the beginning, they're not significant, but this is a non-zero. So there is one significant figure. Um, over here, these first zeros are at the beginning, so they're not significant. And then we have a digit um, that is a non-zero, so this is significant. And then remember, even though the zero, even though this value is a zero, it's in the middle of um, two non-zero um, non numbers, so there's three. 
significant figures. Um, another rule uh, for measurements with decimals, zeros at the end are significant. So remember, this is only for decimals, um, but since this zero is at the end of it, there are two significant figures because this is a um, non-zero digit. So try to uh, find the number of significant figures in this number. So there are three. And this is because um, these are not significant, um, at, the, at the beginning they're never significant, and then these are non-zero numbers, and then it's a decimal, so zeros at the end are significant. However, for measurements without decimal places, um, or decimals, zeros at the end are not significant. So for this one, there are only three sig figs, because this zero is not significant. Um, and then finally, in measurements with, or you're just expressing something in scientific notation, the only values that are significant are the ones before this time uh, 10 to the whatever it is. So this number is completely unrelated to how many significant figures there are. Um, this is, uh, so this would be three sig figs. And this is really just saying, so like, so since this value um, not in scientific notation is really um, one, two, three, Um, is really this number. And remember, uh, zeros at the beginning for decimal places are not significant, and then these are all significant. So this is just three sig figs. So they really follow the same rule, but if you don't want to write this out every time, just know that whatever is in this box or before the times 10 is significant. So for this one over here, 2.0506 times 10 to the 120th, how many sig figs would there be? Yeah, there would only be five because everything in this box is significant before the times 10 to the 120th. So how do we know how many sig figs there are when we're adding, subtracting, and multiplying, and dividing? So remember that the least certain measurement determines the amount of sig figs. So because, and this is because the lower the amount of sig figs, the less precise it is. So we don't want to say it's more precise than we actually know. Um, so, for example, when adding and subtracting, we only use our answer will have um, will match the number with the fewest decimal places. So, for example, with 3.03 .03 plus 0.1, um, this has two decimal places and this has one. So, our final final answer needs to have one decimal place. So that means that the real answer is 3.13, but we can only have one decimal place. And same rounding rules apply. So this actually equals. 3.1. Um, on an AP test, you would get a point off if you answered with 3.13, so it's super important that you pay attention to sig figs. Um, for this next one, um, this has, we're adding, so fewest decimal places, um, um, two decimal places and two decimal places. So the answer is 3.13, um, but, and this has two decimal places and they're the same, so the fewest is two decimal places. So this is the correct answer. Um, for this one, 3.03 .03 plus 0 0.100, uh, this has two decimal places, this has three decimal places. Two is the fewest decimal places. So our answer, um, 3.13, must have two decimal places, so 3.13. So you can kind of see how pretty much the same values can have um, different answers. So it's super important that you pay attention to the significant figures. Uh, moving on to multiplying and dividing. With multiplying and dividing, you go to the, your answer should match the number with the fewest sig figs. So for example, the, this has um, two significant figures, this has two significant figures, um, this answer is um, 4.0, and this has two significant figures, so this is good. Um, here, uh, we're dividing, um, so if you have significant figures, this has one, this has one, two divided by two is one, and this is good, it has one significant figure. Um, for this one, 2.0 divided by two, we're dividing, fewest significant figures. This has two significant figures, this has one, and so our real answer is technically 1.0, but the real answer is one, because there's one significant figure, which matches 
the one second forget the year over here um it is really important to understand the context behind which numbers you're adding and multiplying um, or dividing or subtracting so for example 12 inches in a foot is different than the table is 12 inches because this value is an exact value there are definitely 12 inches in a foot However, we're not sure if the table is actually 12 inches. It depends on what measurement measuring device that we're using. So ignore any sig figs that are in exact values. So there are like 30 students or um, there are 12 inches in a foot. So for example, if you're saying um, you have to multiply 12 inches in a foot by, I don't know, whatever number, um, like, uh, 340 or something, I don't know, um, you just ignore this because this is de this is certain. There's 12 inches in a foot. You don't need to use this. So this answer will have three, um, or I guess if this was, oh, sorry, um, 341, this would be three significant figures. Um, however, if you're saying the table is 12 inches, this is a measured amount. This is an, an exact value. So then you would actually use... Um, two significant figures. So it's super important to understand the context behind the numbers that you're calculating. Okay, so one more thing to note is when we're, you're using mixed operations. So when you're um, maybe adding and dividing, adding and multiplying, subtracting and multiplying, or um, subtracting and dividing. So what do we do? What is our final answer gonna look like? So consider this problem, three plus three over two, um, and basically, you just have to consider the number of significant figures and choose the, um, and your answer has to reflect the number with the least significant figures. So for example, three, there's one significant figure. Um, three, also one. Um, for two, this is three significant figures. And so what is the um, least amount of significant figures? One. So our answer will have one sig fig. So if we actually did this, 6 divided by 2, so this is 3. So the answer would be 3. So yeah, when you're using mixed operations, uh, just look at the number of sig figs. Um, moving on to dimensional analysis. So this is for when um, you multiply and divide units and numbers to cancel out units and to make sure that your answer has the correct units. So for example, when you're um, switching units, so you want two inches and you want to know how many feet two inches are. So first you want to start off with two inches and always put this first value over one because there's just two inches. Um, and then you multiply um, and remember you want feet at the end so you want inches to cancel because remember dividing um, units, these cancel. Um, so then how many inches are in a foot? There are 12 inches for every one foot. And so here you can see that these inches cancel and feet doesn't cancel, it's feet over one. So your final answer is equal to feet. And then all you just need to do is two times one, two divided by 12 times one. So two divided by 12 is equal to 0.6 and just check your sig figs. So remember you're dividing, so um, the you need to have the fewest sig figs. So this is one sig fig, this is, um, this doesn't matter because it's a measurement. Okay, moving on to dimensional analysis. So this is a tool used um, using multiplication and division, and this is used to cancel units or have your answer match the units that you want. So when you're converting between units, so for example, two inches is equal to how many feet? So you start with this first number, what you know, which is two inches, um, and I just put that over one um, times, um, and remember you don't want inches in your final answer, you want feet. And so you need to use a conversion factor, or like for example, 12 inches, in is equal to one foot to get your final answer so in and you know in order to cancel units they need to be divided by each other so two inches and then 12 inches over one foot so now these cancel so now you're just left with feet um so now you can do 
2 divided by 12, which is like uh, 0.167. Um, but this is not your final answer, because remember, you need to pay attention to sig figs. Um, and you're dividing, so it's the fewest sig figs. This is 1. But remember, this is a conversion factor, and conversion factors are exact values. So you really don't need to pay attention to significant figures for this. So just ignore significant figures for this one. And then there are one. there's one significant figure over here. Your answer needs to be one significant figure, so 0.2. Um, if you're going from meters to inches, so write down what you know, which is 8.00 meters over one times and remember you have these conversion factors you need to cancel your units so um, another way to do this when you have multi-step problems is to write out how many steps you need so remember you need meters to cancel first meters over here you have a conversion factor with meters there's one centimeter um you can write these values in um, and then you need inches, and you have this conversion factor, centimeters to inches. But remember, you need to cancel centimeters, so centimeters has to go on the bottom, 2.54 centimeters. And then remember, centimeters is one inch, so one inch. And this should cancel your meters units, and this should cancel your centimeters units. So now you're just end up with inches. And remember, your final answer needs to have three significant figures because these are all exact units so you don't exact values you don't need to worry about these significant figures um, but this has three